Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. And welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this Soundbites module, I'd like to begin by discussing the case of a patient who presented with worsening shortness of breath and had a chest X-ray which revealed this finding. Notice here we have the presence of an opacified left hemithorax, and notice here that the trachea is pushed away from the left hemithorax, suggesting the presence of a very large pleural effusion as the cause of our patient's dyspnea. Now, if in fact this was a large pleural effusion causing our patient's shortness of breath, a therapeutic thoracentesis would be in order to relieve her symptoms. This leads into the topic for this Soundbites module, which is the use of bedside ultrasound to perform the thoracentesis procedure. In this module, I'd like to go through how sonography can potentially make the thoracentesis procedure a safer one for our patients with a decrease in the inherent complications of the procedure, such as pneumothorax or perforation of the diaphragm. Before performance of a thoracentesis procedure, it's mandatory to look with sonography to make sure that there's enough pleural fluid amenable for a safe thoracentesis. Notice here we have the patient positioned in an upright position so that the fluid will layer out above the level of the diaphragm. Notice here we note the diaphragm as shown by the red line across the patient's anterior chest wall. Notice here we have the probe positioned along the lateral aspect of the patient's chest with a marker dot towards the patient's head. We can angle the probe above the diaphragm to look for a dark or anechoic collection of fluid consistent with a pleural effusion. This is the ultrasound image that corresponds to the chest x-ray from the patient as we discussed in the beginning of the module. We have the probe positioned across the patient's left side of the chest coming in with the probe marker towards the patient's head. We can see here superior towards the left and inferior towards the right. We note the spleen and the kidney inferior in the abdominal compartment and we see the white line that is the diaphragm moving up and down as the patient breathes. We note above the diaphragm, superior in the chest cavity, the presence of a large dark or anechoic collection of fluid consistent with a very large pleural effusion and we fail to appreciate any lung within this pleural effusion. Just to emphasize the point that it's very important to look with sonography prior to performance of a thoracentesis procedure, we note this pleural effusion is taken from the right chest. We see the liver towards the inferior aspect of the patient towards the right here, and we note above the diaphragm here, which is moving up and down as the patient breathes, the presence of a dark or anechoic fluid collection. But we also see here lung within the pleural effusion and an attachment of the lung, a fibrinous attachment, that attaches the lung down to the diaphragm. So this could be potentially a complicated performance of a thoracentesis as a needle that goes into that chest cavity could be pushed by that fibrinous attachment up into the lung causing a pneumothorax. This is the first traditional position of the patient for the thoracentesis procedure. This is the recumbent position in which we have the patient lying down with the head of the bed elevated. This will encourage the fluid to layer out above the diaphragm and make it more amenable to a puncture attempt. Here we see a pleural effu effusion within the left hemithorax. Note the effusion as denoted by the yellow liquid around the red lung. Here the black star indicates the appropriate position for the needle for the puncture point for the thoracentesis. When performing a thoracentesis procedure, the needle should be positioned above the level of the rib so as to avoid the neurovascular bundle, which is shown in this illustration, lies just below to the rib. Here I'm demonstrating the appropriate position of the probe to investigate for the lateral approach to the thoracentesis, this time on the right chest. Notice the positioning of the probe, in this case the 3 MHz probe, on the lateral chest wall, right above the level of the diaphragm, to look for a pleural effusion. Here I'll indicate the orientation of the ribs across the lateral chest wall, and here's about the orientation of the diaphragm. Now remember that that diaphragm will move up and down as the patient breathes, so we want to place the probe above the level of the diaphragm to look into the thoracic cavity for a suitable collection of fluid. Therefore, here we note the position of the needle for the appropriate positioning of the needle for the lateral puncture approach to the thoracentesis procedure. And we note again the level of the diaphragm on the lateral chest wall as shown by the red line, and we note the needle above the diaphragm so that it could safely enter into the thoracic cavity and not cause a complication such as puncture of the diaphragm during the thoracentesis procedure. Here we note the second traditional positioning of the patient for the thoracentesis procedure, which is the standard upright position in which the needle would come in from a posterior approach, and we note the patient bending forward over a stand or a table. Here we see a pleural effusion within the right chest, and we note here the patient has a puncture point that would come in into the pleural effusion below the scapula but above the layer of the diaphragm.
In this video clip, I'll outline some of the surface anatomy important for the posterior approach to the thoracentesis procedure. Here's about the level of the scapula on the posterior chest wall, and this is about the level of the diaphragm. So the appropriate positioning for the needle for the thoracentesis procedure would be about the level of my finger here. And we'll just freeze that down. There's the scapula. And here's about the level of the diaphragm. Notice my finger safely above the diaphragm so as not to puncture through the diaphragm into the abdominal cavity. As shown by the black star, this would be the appropriate positioning of the needle for the thoracentesis procedure. Prior to the thoracentesis procedure, we'll investigate the pleural effusion using a 3 MHz probe. Notice the 3 MHz probe is placed along the posterior chest wall, at first with the probe marker in the long axis trajectory, with the orientation of the marker towards the patient's head. We can then swivel the probe into the lateral orientation with the probe marker lateral to further investigate above the diaphragm for a suitable collection of pleural effusion amenable to a thoracentesis procedure. A clinical pearl that can be very helpful in further delineating the pleural effusion with regard to the patient's anatomy is to look further with a 10 MHz high frequency linear array type probe prior to the thoracentesis puncture. Notice here we're placing the high frequency probe along the posterior chest wall in the long axis configuration with the probe marker swiveled towards the patient's head. We can also orient the probe in between the patient's ribs in the lateral orientation as well to further investigate the anatomy. This illustration shows what the anatomy of a pleural effusion will look like using a high frequency 10 MHz probe. In this illustration, the probe is configured in the long axis orientation, so we have superior to the left and inferior to the right. We see anteriorly the chest wall, and we see the superior rib to the left and the inferior rib to the right. We note the parietal pleura, that white line just deep to the ribs, and below the parietal pleura we can see the dark or anechoic pleural effusion. In this illustration, we're actually showing here the viscera pleura that coats the outside of the lung, and we can actually see the distance between the pleura layers, the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura, which would be the full extent of the pleural effusion. This would be your safety zone, or the area in which it would be safe to place a needle. It would be not safe to place a needle any deeper than that safety zone, as a needle could puncture through the visceral pleura and into the lung, causing a pneumothorax. Here's an ultrasound image showing a very large pleural effusion as taken with a high frequency 10 MHz probe, superior towards the left, inferior towards the right. We can see the hyperchoic or bright bone tables of the rib, both superior and inferior, which will show us the areas of the rib to avoid during the thoracentesis procedure. We'd actually want to come in over the top of the inferior rib to avoid the neurovascular bundle. We can see here the white line making up the parietal pleura, and deep to the parietal pleura we note a large amount of pleural effusion. We note here the absence of a lung in the pleural effusion, so we could place the needle pretty deeply here without causing a pneumothorax. This ultrasound image is again taken with a high frequency 10 MHz probe, but in this orientation the probe is configured between the ribs in the lateral orientation. So all we see is the chest wall anteriorly, we see the parietal pleura, that white line deep to the chest wall, and just deep to the parietal pleura we can see the pleural effusion as made up by the darker anechoa collection of fluid. Now note here that we also see the lung sliding back and forth as the patient breathes and we can see the full extent of the pleural effusion or the safety zone for performance of the thoracentesis procedure. In this ultrasound image, again taken with a 10 MHz high frequency probe, we can see the diaphragm moving back and forth as the patient breathes, defining the lower aspect of the thoracic cavity. Thus, it would probably be unsafe to perform a thoracentesis at this level of the chest wall because we might go through the diaphragm and into the spleen with the needle. So it's important to look first to ascertain the level of the diaphragm and make sure that the thoracentesis needle is going safely above the diaphragm so as not to puncture into the abdominal compartment. In this video clip, we'll first place the high frequency 10 MHz probe along the posterior aspect of the chest wall to define the proper orientation for the puncture for the posterior approach to the thoracentesis procedure. The needle can then come in directly underneath the probe as shown here. Now, I'll show a wide angle shot here and note this is the proper position for the thoracentesis needle as defined by sonography from the posterior approach to thoracentesis. In conclusion, thanks for tuning in for this Sound Bites module going over ultrasound guidance for the thoracentesis procedure. Sonography can potentially make the procedure a safer one for our patients with a decrease in the complication rate such as pneumothorax or perforation of the diaphragm. We'll want to use both the 3 MHz and higher frequency 10 MHz probes to fully evaluate the effusion in relation to the patient's anatomy prior to a puncture attempt.
We can either use a static technique where we position the patient appropriately and then mark off the puncture spot with sonography prior to the thoracentesis procedure, or we can use a dynamic technique where we place the probe in a sterile sheath and watch the needle in real time go into the chest cavity. So I hope to see you back in the future as Soundbites continues.